It's been 10 years since we were introduced to Black Ops. Black Ops Cold War drops us directly into the depths of Cold War in 1981. After meeting with the Secretary of State Alex Haig and President of the United States Ronald Reagan, CIA operative Russell Adler is tasked to hunt down Soviet agent Perseus to prevent an attack on the free world. Adler assembles an elite team of operatives including Alex Mason, Frank Woods, Jason Hudson, Grigory Weaver, Lawrence Sims, Alizar Lazar Azuli and Bell. The stories of these and other campaign characters like Helen Park, Russell Adler's partner, are told in this and the next video. In this video specifically we're diving in depth on Russell Adler, Jason Hudson, Lawrence Sims, Elazar Lazar Azuli, Bell and Helen Park since covering all the characters including Alex Mason, Frank Woods and Grigory Weaver would take up too much time. In the second part, as I said, we're taking a look at Alex Mason, Frank Woods and Grigory Weaver. Nineteen forty three. Detailed information from the Manhattan Project was stolen from Los Alamos by the Russian spy known as Perseus. Nineteen sixty eight. Vietnam War. Viet Cong soldiers orchestrated by Perseus attempted to steal an American made nuclear bomb from a U.S. firebase. Five days ago, while on a mission, we acquired intel that Perseus is in play again and planning an attack on the West. Perseus, the CIA's analysts consider him to be the single largest threat to the free world. Mr. Hudson, we're all aware of Perseus. We're also aware he's more myth than fact. I mean, personally, I think he's nothing more than the Russian boogeyman. General Haig, allow me to introduce the man best suited to respond to that. CIA clandestine special officer Russell Adler. He's one of the few people who even come close to capturing Perseus. Uh, Mr. Adler, why should we take this Perseus threat seriously? You don't have to, sir. <laughs> yeah, but then a lot of innocent people are gonna die. Why do you say that? Sir, every time Perseus has come into play, it's shifted the balance of the Cold War. After 13 years of silence, if he's active, something big is gonna happen. Something that will affect the free world. Mr. President. Sir. Mr. President. Mr. President, this is Jason Hudson and Russell Adams. I know their names. Who do you think approved their last mission? Is the threat real? Yes, sir, we believe it is. Can you stop Perseus? We can, sir. I've already submitted the requisition for my team. Sir, their requests are highly irregular. Most likely illegal. If the press gets all... What the hell are you talking about? Do you know who we are? Every mission we go on is illegal. Sergeant Woods, plausible deniability is the backbone of our work. Al, we're talking about preventing an attack on the free men and women of the world. Give Mr. Adler whatever he wants. Gentlemen, you've been given an important task, protecting our very way of life from a great evil. There is no higher duty. There is no higher honor. And while few people will know of your struggles, rest assured, the entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. Born in 1937, Russell Adler has become a mystery even to those who have worked by his side for years. His history before joining the CIA in 1966 is known only to a few within Langley. In 1967, Adler was assigned to the Mac V SOG unit in Vietnam investigating covert Soviet activity. Adler is a mysterious CIA operative called in for some of the most difficult assignments. He's a black box even to some of his closest associates. After Vietnam, Adler disappeared from CIA records but continued to be affiliated with a number of clandestine operations. 
He possesses a cold confidence that commands the room. He rarely smiles but maintains a biting dry wit, capable of switching between disarming charisma and emotionless brutality in an instant. Adler enjoys intimidating those around him and excels at it. His deep knowledge of covert tactics, fluency in Russian and German and a mastery of espionage makes him one of the few key operatives that the CIA can consistently rely upon. On January 13, 1981, during a mission with Frank Woods in Turkey, Adler discovered the Soviet agent Perseus became active and four days later Jason Hudson tasked Adler to build a team to track down and eliminate Perseus. Jason Hudson was born and raised in Washington DC with big dreams of one day serving his country like his older brother had in the Second World War. He enlisted and served in the United States Army 101st Airborne Division in the Korean War, but after being honorably discharged in 1955, his path took him in another direction. Hudson enrolled at Georgetown University to study psychology and political science, proving to be an exceptional student. After graduating, he entered the CIA where his intelligence and perseverance pushed him quickly up the ranks, leading to his selection for some of the most dangerous assignments imaginable. Though utterly loyal to the CIA, many questioned his personal allegiances as he pushed his associates to the brink so he could accomplish his own goals. How would this selective loyalty serve Mason and accomplish what needed to be done for what Hudson viewed as the greater good? We all know the answer today, but it's worth reflecting on the events that led us to finding out what the numbers really meant. On November 10th, 1963, Hudson was entrusted with escorting Mason to the Pentagon to be briefed by the United States Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, before meeting with President John F. Kennedy. Mason's new orders killed Soviet General Nikita Dragovich. Five years later, Hudson joined Mason and Sergeant Frank Woods in Khe San, Vietnam to investigate rumblings of Soviet activity in the area. The mission proved to be a valuable endeavor despite its inherent dangers as the team worked to locate a Soviet defector with key intel. Hudson managed to hold his own in a massive battle as the men fought to successfully evacuate the area. In early February 1968, Hudson was sent to Kowloon City, Hong Kong to interrogate Dr. Daniel Clark, one of the engineers responsible for the creation of the infamous chemical weapon Nova 6. After carefully extracting key information from Dr. Clark that identified Nazi scientist Dr. Friedrich Steiner as a creator of the project, Hudson prepped a team to travel to the Soviet facility at Mount Yamantau to seize evidence of weaponized Nova 6 gas. Teaming up with fellow CIA operatives Grigory Weaver, Terence Brooks and Bruce Harris, Hudson infiltrated the Yamantau base to gather evidence and apprehend Dr. Steiner. Inside the facility, Steiner made contact with the team remotely to negotiate a deal for his life in exchange for intel on Dragovich, knowing his days were numbered. On the fateful day of February 23rd, 1968, Hudson and Weaver led Alpha Squad on a desperate mission to extract Steiner from Rebirth Island alive. With the base on full alert, the race was on to get Steiner before anyone else. Meanwhile, Mason and his friend Viktor Reznov had also arrived on the island to breach the laboratories and take out any resistance along the way. After reaching Steiner ahead of Alpha Squad, Mason believed Reznov was responsible for confronting and killing Steiner in his laboratory, but Hudson and Weaver witnessed a different version of the truth. With no other options to turn to, Hudson resorted to pushing Mason beyond his limits in a lengthy interrogation until the harsh realities of Mason's brainwashing from years past were finally revealed. Believing that Mason's subconscious held the key to stopping Dragovich, Hudson worked with Mason to locate and take down the newly discovered number station on the Soviet ship Rosalka and put an end to Dragovich for good. The rest, as they say, is history. Until now. On January 17, 1981, Hudson calls upon his old colleague, Russell Adler, to form an elite team of operatives in the pursuit of a dangerous Soviet agent. Although he doesn't fully trust him and disagrees with some of his more unconventional methods, Hudson knows that if anyone has the personal motivation to see this task through to its conclusion, it's Adler. Born in 1948, Elazar was the second child to professors of political science at the American University of Washington, D.C. In 1950, his father accepted a position at the Tel Aviv School of Law and Economics, moving the family to Israel in order to be closer to his own ailing parents. 
As a teenager, Azule stood out for his athleticism and strength, excelling on every team he was a member of. After four years at Royal Holloway, University of London, where he began to go by the nickname Lazar, Azuli entered the Israel Defense Forces and was later recruited by the Mossad, Israel's intelligence agency. During this time in the agency, Lazar developed a reputation not only for explosive power, but also for his unflappability. After years working alongside agents of the CIA, Azuli decided to leave the Mossad and used his dual citizenship to join the CIA as a Middle East specialist. In 1981, Russell Adler picked Lazar as one of the operatives he needed to hunt down Perseus. Lawrence Sims was born on February 4, 1942 at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. After the loss of his father, he developed a laid-back and lightly sarcastic persona, studying the world with detached amusement. Sims quickly immersed himself in the world of technology, both military and consumer, quietly focusing on following his father's footsteps. After receiving a scholarship and graduating from Rochester Institute of Technology, Sims entered the United States Army, where he served for two years before joining the CIA. There, he quickly became known for his keen intelligence, pragmatism and ability to solve intractable problems. In a twist of fate, his first major assignment was a placement on Russell Adler's MACV SOG team in Vietnam, where he immediately became one of Adler's favorite cohorts. Sims has continued to be a constant presence on Adler's team ever since, including the fateful operation that would bring him face to face with Alex Mason and Frank Woods. Helen Park entered Oxford at the young age of 16. While working on her doctorate in international relations, her older brother was severely injured in an IRA car bomb attack in London, leading her to immediately drop out from the program. She began to study the origins and motivations of international paramilitary organizations, eventually leading her to join the ranks of the Secret Intelligence Service or MI6. After several years of international assignments, Park was placed on protection service for two British scientists. Under Park's watch, the team was set to travel to a clandestine location to collaborate with the CIA on an officially sponsored project. There she met Adler, a key figure in the new program and personally took on an expanded role in its development. Afterwards, she would join Adler on an ad hoc black operations team unit, utilizing the fruits of their labor together. However, the interests of MI6 and the Crown always come first for Park, whether her new partners know it or not. Lastly, there's Belle, who we know absolutely nothing about. Thank you guys very much for watching. The creation of these videos is very time consuming, from writing the script to designing the motion graphics. If you like these types of videos and want to support me in continuing creating, there are several things you can do. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video. Other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me how I'm not just doing it for myself and shows how I can improve. And the last way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars. In return you will unlock exclusive rewards such as digital lore items and exclusive posts or perhaps unique ideas you can implement. The more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube and in turn this will result in more frequent uploads and higher quality content. Whatever you decide to do, I'll be here because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching, peace out.